Palestine Tomorrow will be free Palestine Tomorrow will be free um, Next up, um, we have a short speech by a visiting scholar from Florida Hujut al-Islam Malana Bey, Salah Alright everyone, uh, if you can uh, stand up Please stand up, everyone. <laughs> and let's read the dua of Imam al Zamana together. Bismillah <laughs> ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma tuli waliyaka al-Hujjat ibn al-Hasan. First of all, there are some empty seats up here. Those who are standing in the back, you can come forward and have a seat over here. Thank you. All right, uh, just a few words I'll say. And we have a few minutes here. <clears throat> I heard a speech and I just want to... Uh, give a small quote from that speech that I heard and um, it, the speaker said and listen to this carefully he says for we are opposed in the world by a monolithic and rootless conspiracy that primarily relies on covet means to expand its sphere of influence the attack by night not by day they rely on subversion. The speaker is warning the people regarding Zionism. The speaker is warning the people regarding Zionism. And can you guess who the speaker was? This who the speaker was. Well, let me tell you who the speaker was, who's warning the people against Zionism. His name was John F. Kennedy. And it was soon after this that he was killed by Harry Oswald, who then was killed by Jack Ruby, a.k.a. Jack Rubenstein. My friends, uh, we don't need to assume that there are conspiracies. Allah has testified to it in the Quran. He has testified to it in the Quran. He says, Makaru, they plot. Allah didn't say who. Allah says they plot. They plan. But at the same time, Allah is planning. Wa makarullah. Wa makarullah. Allah is planning also. Wallahu khairul makirin. Allah is the best of planners. Allah is the best of planners. In other words, those who plot, those who plot, they inherently are weak. They are weak. 
That's why they subvert or they choose to do good. If you ever looked into the meaning of dhul or oppression, you will see that it's a tactic that's used by those who are weak. Anyone who reverts to dhul or oppression, he reverts to it because he's weak, not because he's strong. Not because he's strong. He can't do what he wants to do by rightful means, so he reverts to dhul. Let me give an example if you send a salawat. If I have something in my hand that you want, something that I have that's precious in my hand that you want, so you'll try to open my hand as much as you can. Now let's say you are not able to. You're not able to open my hand. Then because you're unable to, you revert to beating me up, abusing me, and at the end probably killing me. Now tell me, why did you kill me? Why did you hurt me? Because you were unable to open my hand. A person reverts to Zoom when he's unable to do things. Unable to achieve his objectives. That's why he chooses this. Now when someone does Zoom, when someone does Zoom and oppression, and we see that it's being done, and every time a person does it, it's because he's weak. First thing to do is to recognize that he is weak. Recognize that he's doing this because he's weak. Once you recognize that he is doing it because he's weak, then the second thing that we have been told to do by the Prophet and the Imams, is that when a Zalim wants to oppress you, do not give him the satisfaction of seeing you break down to his plans. You understand this, my friend? You understand what is our reaction? Zionism, my friends, is a conspiracy come true. Yeah, like you have a dream come true. You know, this is a conspiracy come true. What is Zionism? Zionism is like the, uh, the Taliban amongst Muslims. Right? That's what they are. They are the uh, Taliban of the Jews. Jews Right? Are different. Zionists are different. Zionists are just the, this uh, extrovert group, subversive group amongst the Jews who uh, carry out these atrocious things. And we have seen this. There's no reason to prove to anyone what wrong they have done. But the issue is this. When they are doing wrong, when a Zalim does wrong, and our Imams went through this oppression also to give us an example of how to deal with oppression. How do you deal when you are being oppressed, when you are being harmed, and you are Muslim? The first thing that a Mu'min must realize what they taught us is do not give those people the satisfaction of seeing you break down. Because they want to see you cry, or they want to see you get angry. They want to see you get angry. They want to see you shout and get all maniacal. But you know what hurts the Zalim most? Is that he's trying to make you angry, but you are smiling. That's something that he can't live with. How is that possible? Your firmness is there. Your determination is there. But our method and the method that we have been taught by Ahlul Bayt in front of Zul is never to give in to Zul. A Zalim wants something from you, do not give him what he wants. 
You hold your ground, you stand firm, and you be strong. And then when he does something, when he wants to do something, I mean, just like Hussein had showed in the play, right? You know what they wanted him? They wanted him to cry at their feet. They wanted him to get angry. That's what they want. They want him to get angry. But then what happens is that when you get angry, then they say, yes, we are getting to him now. They get the satisfaction of that. That's why you see the Masoom, our Imams, never gave them that satisfaction. That's why they hated them and at the end killed them. Death to us is not a problem. Death to us is never the problem. In fact, it is an honor for us to die standing up for what is right. <laughs> The reality of Zionism is that it's just a group of people who have subverted to uh, Zulum on innocent people. Really, they have. And when these people, they do Zulum on innocent people, on people who are weaker than them. But you know what? They don't have the guts. They don't have the strength or the power or the determination or the courage to deal with someone their own size. Because when they dealt with someone their own size, they got their behind kicked. That's what happens. You dealt with the innocent people of Palestine because they're weak, that's why you are oppressing them. But when you dealt with Hezbollah, what happened? You got your behind kicked and you ran so fast out of their land that you were crying when you came into your land and saying, what happened? This is what happens. These people, they can't, they're not strong. They're just weaklings. That's all they are. And as the more we understand that, the better it is for us. They are weak because strength and might is only for Allah. It is only for Allah, my friends. Yazid thought he was very strong. Yazid thought he was very mighty, but what happened? What happened? Yes, he killed Hussein. But that same Yazid and the same power that he had, where is that power today? That should be enough of a lesson for us that these people are not strong, they are inherently weak. So that's Zionism. Now let me deal with Palestine, my friends. Why do we care about Palestine? Why do you care about Palestine? Is it because of the bloodshed there? Because I think the people might get the wrong message for what they have seen today. Do you really think it's the bloodshed and the killing of children or women or men that we are caring for? I want you to think about this. When you looked at Ashura, why do you care about Ashura? Is it the bloodshed in Ashura that you care about? Is that what's making you cry? Think about it, my friend. That bloodshed is happening everywhere. Why aren't you crying and caring for every other thing? Why do you care for Karbala more than anything else? It's not the bloodshed. It's not the persecution. It's not even the oppression, my friends. Why do you care about it? Let me read an ayat for you, so that from here you can understand. Why do we care? Send us our words. Allah says here, and I want you to see the tone of this ayat. He says, وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالْمُسْتَغَفِينَ Here's how Allah is asking. Allah is saying, what's your problem? 
What's your problem? That you don't fight in the way of Allah. He's asking the Muslims, not non-Muslims. He's saying, what's your problem? That's what this literally means. Monarchy. What is your problem that you're not fighting in the way of Allah? So tell me, is fighting in the way of Allah important in Islam? Is it? Yes. What is it called? Jihad. Say it out loud. You don't need Jihad. Jihad. One more time. Jihad. Ladies, one more time. Jihad. That's right. That's what it's called. Fighting in the way of Allah is jihad, right? And now I want you to see how Allah mentions this. He says, what's wrong with you that you don't fight in the way of Allah? And what's wrong with you that you don't fight in the way of those who are weak? Allah is equating you fighting for the weak the same as fighting for Allah. Fighting for those who are dark rotten, those who are oppressed, those whose rights are taken away. Allah is making this equal to fighting in His way. Those people who are wrong. And you know what this has become? This has become the growth of your faith. Now I want to explain this. Say the salawats. My brothers and sisters understand this. We are here to learn. We are here to learn. And I want to make you understand the ideology that we have. What Allah is trying to teach us. You know, how do you know that you have grown in faith? How long have you been a Muslim, a practicing Muslim, let's say? Because some people who have led the lives of Jahiliya accepted Islam one day in their lives and you all are proof that you are now practicing. You have faith. Since the time you had faith and started praying, what is that standard? What is that criteria that tells you that you have grown? That you have become better? Do you want to know a standard by which you can judge yourself and say, yes, I have grown? Allah is giving this standard in the Quran. Look at yourself based on that standard. If you grow in that standard, it means you have grown in your faith. If you say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad and Rasulullah, Ali and Waliullah, if you believe in the wilayat of Ahlul Bayt, how do you know that you have grown? How do you know that your wilayat has grown? How do you know that your love has grown? How do you know that your worship has grown? How do you? Allah is saying, in giving this criteria for us. He says, you don't want to know how you can grow? My friends, this is how you know. If you grow in faith, there is a relationship, a direct relationship with your growth in faith and your love and support of those who are weak and oppressed. Allah. Understand that? You see that? If you want to know that you have grown in life, then how much do you care about those who are oppressed? If you see that you don't care, then your life does not grow. If you see that you haven't, if you don't care about those who are Muslim and those who are on the ground and being beaten up and abused, then it means that your wilayat is not growing. Your wilayat grows by those, by your love and attachment to those who are weak. Salawat Now I let me speak to the Shias. Because I was told that this is going to be a Shia gathering. So I'm going to speak to you for a little while. Right? And Ali, just tell me when I have to quit. Alright? I'll walk down. Okay. Alright. My friends, you who love Ahlul Bayt, let me speak to you a few minutes. You know, there. People ask, why do we care about Palestine? They're not even Shia. 
In fact, if you have the Sunnis, right, they'll say, and that's what happened, I uh, came from the airport directly, and I happened to have a Ethiopian driver, taxi cab. And I was speaking to him, so he said, so what do you think about Palestine? He says, they deserve what they get. <laughs> they deserve what they get. I said, it's a me, right? You know, so I'm like, okay, yeah, fine. I mean, I wanted to get his view, right? What does he really think? And that is the overwhelming view of people that you ask. That's what they said. And for us, we have more of a reason, right? Hey, man, you know, we are Shia, and they're Sunni, and we are like, whoa, I mean, further apart from each other. But why do we care? You know why we care? The problem is that the Messenger of Allah has made us an Ummat. That's the problem. He made us brothers. I might not like my brother, he might be a very ignorant fool, but he's still my brother. He's my brother. And the Messenger has said, Rasulullah has said, that this, you Ummat, you are like a body. If one part of your body gets hurt, the other parts feel the pain. Allah. Understand it? This is the problem. Really, that's why we care. Why we care? Because this is a part of us now. It is a part of us. If someone wants to hurt my hand and chop my finger, I'll use the other hand to punch him. Right? The other hand won't say, okay, go ahead, I never liked that hand anyway. <laughs> it won't happen like that. The idea is that the other hand will feel the pain and will react to defend this hand. This is it, my friends. We are an Ummat. We are a nation. We are a family that Rasulullah has made. And this is that family for which Imam Ali spent many days in his house, isolated, crying. This is the same Ummah that Imam Hassan went through so much. This is the same Ummah for which Imam Hussein stood up and took his family to Karbala. What did Imam Hussein say? In kharajto litalab al-Islam fi ummat jaddi I'm going out to do Islam in the Ummah of my grandfather. I'm ready to sacrifice my family for this Ummah. The same Ummah that has killed his father. The same Ummah that was responsible for killing his mother. The same Ummah that was responsible for killing his brother. Imam Hussain is saying that I am standing up for them so that rectification can happen. Yes, my friends, this is a very deep issue for us. It's a huge issue for us. This is an ummah, Rasulullah. You made us an ummah, that's it. You make me family, that's it. This is why we care. Now it's a part of us. And that Israel that has been made in our land, in the land of our Muslims who are now torturing Muslims, how is it possible that we can sleep at night? Imam Hussein didn't sleep. He stood up. My friends, one of these I'll mention to you so that, you know, there are many things, you know, but inshallah if we have a question and answers, probably I'll answer it there, right? But one of these I mentioned from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Send a lot of He's speaking to the Muslims who are now divided into factions. He's speaking to Muslims who are divided into factions and he's saying, in Najib Allah, this is there. He's saying that there are two reasons. There are two reasons that you don't recognize yourself as an Ummah. The two reasons he gives why you cannot be with each other like brothers. 
The first reason he said is because your hearts have become dead. Your hearts have become dead. The second reason he says, your intentions have become wayward. My friends, the and then he gave uh, ways to get rid of that. He says that you want to get rid of this dirt inside of yourself and come together again. This can only be done. This ummah that is spread out can only be brought together when you establish imams, when you establish leadership. When leadership is established, you will see that these kids who have gone here and there are going to come back to their father and they are going to now be in one house and become functional again. If leadership is not established, if leadership is not recognized, then no matter what we do on our own, it's not going to matter. My friends, our strength is in this ummah. And the ummah finds meaning when they mount, when leadership is there. So I will just end over here. Inshallah, if there's whatever is a question and answers, you know, we will answer questions there. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you all. And thank you for all those youngsters who have done great research in trying to give these presentations and to learn and to educate other youths. You have done a magnificent job and may Allah give you reward for that. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq and the blessing to be on the right path. The wisdom to understand his guidance. Haste to the reappearance of our Imam, make us his helper when he comes. Wa'afir al-Jabana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. Salam alaykum.